Hi, Hensters. How are you doing? Don't mind my post shower hair. <laughs> I hope you keep it well. Um, my name is Hini. If you don't know, I am a spiritual astrologer, and you can subscribe to my channel if you like what I do, and you can give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. So, this is going to be a quick wee one on the new moon in Sagittarius. I still have a little bit of like a mini cold but I'm getting better. Anyway, <laughs> happy hump day as well. It is hump day as I record. Anyway, this new moon is going to be happening around December 13th at 20 degrees of Sagittarius. I already made some videos on Sagittarius season in general and on Mars in Sagittarius and what else? And Mercury and Capricorn as well. Check those out. Okay, but the tone. So I wrote a few things down <laughs> for this new moon. But the tone then is we have Jupiter hosting this new moon. And Jupiter is retrograde at 6 degrees Taurus. This is handling uh, <laughs> what uh, is already on our plates especially all the good stuff, like handling what we already have on our plates or in our hands. And we have a square that this new moon and the sun are making to Neptune in Pisces. And I've been saying this for a long time on my channel now, but remember the coffee kind of thing that we have going on with Neptune in Pisces and waking up and smelling it. So this new moon can be where we are able to be open about something or someone, but also being aware of things that might be too good to be true. So it's like not being too much in La La Land in some respect, but also kind of allowing things, being open enough to allow things to come your way at the same time. So there can be for some people a struggle, I guess, especially with Mercury and Capricorn, because Mercury and Capricorn can introduce these feelings of doubt, skepticism, even depression for some people. Um, but this kind of doubt, like, oh, I doubt that that I could have some like romantic relationship or that I could have some desirable opportunity. Like there can be this doubt with this new moon square Neptune that is not really helped sometimes by that Mercury and Capricorn. But at the same time, there is so much potential here for many people to invite magic into their lives and and this is done when they are open, when they are allowing enough of the opportunities to come their way. Yet at the same time, as I said, not uh, being too naive. We have also this new moon trining Aries, trining the North Node in Aries. And this is like things being very easy to reignite. This is something that can get rolling again for some people in some sense. And we have Mercury as well, sextiling Venus in Scorpio. And I mentioned Mercury again because we have a Mercury retrograde coming up pretty soon. And Mercury will actually be stationing to go retrograde around this new moon. And the stationing moment of retrogrades, whether it's stationing to retrograde or stationing to go direct again. These uh, moments were considered in ancient astrology the most kind of poignant points, if you like, of any retrograde. And we have then eight degrees Capricorn, Mercury is there, uh, trining Jupiter. And Jupiter is the host of this new moon. So this is stuff like not giving up. And this is it's also about kind of big infinity energy for a lot of people and really sticking to your guns in some big spiritual sense. This is revising what's worth revising as well and going back and kind of pulling out what has already always worked for you. 
let me mention a few things that are kind of more the Debbie Downer type things uh, of this new moon in Sagittarius, and then I'll get to the good stuff. But like one of the main things I think is that it's this kind of message coming through, this kind of shaking of the finger um, around this new moon, which is that it's not the time for trying something too new um, or like doing or pulling new tricks. I just have this image of a lot of people, a lot of us falling flat on our faces when we try to do something too stunty right now. And this is all stuff like people getting high on playing dumb and um, kind of knowing that we're in the wrong in some sense, uh, or that we are sabotaging something, maybe ourselves or a relationship with someone through our behaviors or our reactions and our kind of impulses. This is also saying yes to something that will later during the Mercury retrograde probably be revealed as futile or the same old story. I don't think this is gonna be like the Mercury retrograde experience for everyone, but it does sometimes have that flavor of things that we have where we haven't learned lessons crop back up and we get kind of hit with the same rubber duck if you like <laughs> um this is finally for the negative quote unquote stuff this is like getting or uh, staying too much in our heads and kind of missing the bigger picture around this new moon in sagittarius and this is stuff like wasting the opportunities uh, to laugh and to say yes a bit more and also missing opportunities to be grateful, especially with Mercury and Capricorn here, especially missing those opportunities to be grateful to people like your bosses, <laughs> which can sound weird, um, but bosses, parents, grandparents, ancestors, all this type of stuff, like it can be easy to miss these opportunities when we're too much in our heads um, or also too much in like kind of fantasy land. I did talk in previous videos recently about like this practice now of taking out the earphones or just one earphone <laughs> or your headphones and kind of experiencing the real world a bit more right now um, and seeing what that can do for us, seeing what we might experience differently. Okay, um, the good stuff then. This is a great new moon, I think, for getting into or back into stuff like exercise, getting into shape, uh, discipline coming through in some sense for a lot of people. This is also the enjoyment of tests of strength um, or like aptitude or, or just, yeah, just doing stuff for fun, like competition for fun, not necessarily for power or pride, but just because it can be fun, a kind of why not type of feeling. We have, again, Mercury and Capricorn. And also we have squares to this new moon from Juno and Lilith in Virgo. And I think any kind of Virgo Sagittarius dynamic always presents us with this kind of exciting itch or agitation to make the right choices in some arena. And this is also a new moon where it's gonna be perhaps a pivotal time to really be believing in ourselves. And a lot of us need this, especially around this time and this is like believing in our visions. And this is also believing in our happiness and choosing to be happy. Rihanna, Pisces Sun, uh, that lyric, I choose to be happy. And that, that rings with me very often in my personal life, like how happiness can often be just a choice. And once we know that and practice that, life can be a lot easier in many ways and arenas. Um, anyway, this is also a new mood for like coaching and pointing people. Sagittarius is the pointer and kind of the arrow thrower, the archer and uh, pointing people, even ourselves maybe, in the right direction 
And this is also stuff like persuasion through questions, because the ta- Sagittarius is the grand questioner and the curious one, the centaur, half man, half animal. Um, and of course, Sagittarius is the uh, immortalization of Chiron, the elder um, centaur. And Chiron also coming through with this new moon because it is trining this new moon from Aries, but also because we have Mercury in Capricorn, which is going to be also translating a lot of things for us, providing a lot of downloads for us that have to do with elders and uh, the knowledge of things that have always been and the knowledge of uh, bygones and the past. Um, kind of excavation of knowledge can be something that Mercury in Capricorn is bringing up for us. <clears throat> okay, this is also like knowing what needs to be done, quite simply. <laughs> Very Sagittarius, but with this new moon energy, it can give that like really exciting, zesty, zeal-y kind of, you know, you feel it in your cockles, the kind of just bubbling up and, and you feel inspired maybe uh, to act on that knowledge of what needs to be done <clears throat> sorry still getting over my cold anyway this is also intense feelings of optimism and righteousness and good fortune as well be really felt i think it's just a very fortunate new mood for a lot of us and this is things like playful conversation and kind of letting the spirit loose all right so i think this new moon in particular will be it's always good or useful or amplified for cancer risings and leo risings because every leo moon really heavily involves obviously the moon but also the sun we have them at the same degree in the same sign but also cancer risings uh, because they are ruled but sorry, uh, moon risings, I, I want to say. So people have moons uh, in the first house on the ascendant. These people also will be very uh, affected or more affected and Sagittarius risings because this new moon is happening in your first house. So for Sagittarius risings, this new moon is all about like new intentions and intensity concerning the themes of body and worldview and your health for Capricorn Risings. This is a kind of, I've written here, a kind of recovered faith in your alone time. So I like that for you, Capricorn Rising. And Aquarius Rising, this is fun times with friends. This is good vibes. Pisces Rising, this is stuff like new jobs. This is uh, feeling a big kind of mojo boost. And this is, of course, um, a very, I want to say Pisces rising as well is going to be one of the more affected of the signs, the rising signs, because this is the moon who is your secret secondary ruler, by the way. Um, but the moon is in the masculine expression of your life path ruler, Jupiter. Pisces is the feminine expression. So often when we have Sagittarius stuff going on for Pisces heavy people, it invites a more kind of exciting or, or I should say extroverted side of the Pisces heavy person. Um, it can definitely give more of a boost uh, to be more productive or more proactive or more practical or more venturing. Um, anyway, Aries rising. This is renewed optimism. This is like a wise trip abroad for some of you. Taurus rising, this is a desire to pay people back somehow. So think about what that might mean for you. Um, Gemini rising, then this is partners and or partnerships. This is forgiveness as well. That's what I have for you, Gemini rising. Cancer rising, this is tackling things that might be hard or unfortunate. 
Especially for a lot of people, things concerning your health, your diet. I want to mention for Cancer Risings as well, we have right now Mars in Sagittarius. This is very important because that's your sixth house. This is where this new moon is as well. But for Cancer Risings, Mars is currently in his joy in the sixth house. So it's an excellent opportunity. Check out the Mars in Sagittarius video I made, by the way, Cancer Risings especially. Um, but the joy in the sixth house is a major opportunity to really tackle something in that house of um, bad fortune, quote unquote, and also to relish in the tackling of that thing, which I think is always great for Cancer Risings. Cancer Risings, once they get that kick to um, take on certain challenges, the, the, the relish and the deliciousness and the tenacity is just stunning. Um, this can also, for Cancer Risings, be like guiding others with a soft kind of mixture of Jupiter and Taurus and Sagittarius, all these energies, archetypes, and uh, the god Jupiter kind of all melding um, and creating kind of spiritual weapons or tools to persuade uh, through guidance. Uh, in, anyway, Leo rising, this is fun. This is happening in your house of fun. And as I said before, all new moons are extra important for you, Leo rising. And this is um, stuff like kids and pets as well, if you have any or are aspiring. And this is risks as well. And being kind of lucky in love and um, dating. Virgo rising then, this is newness at home somehow for a lot of you and this is feeling activations of your Sagittarius side and I do love it when we get this kind of again this kind of square uh, Virgo Sagittarius agitation coming through and um, some Virgo risings yes will be stepping more into their adventurous side their curious side or their goofy kind of let your hair down side Libra rising, then this is stuff like your siblings, your neighbors, your new friends. Also, the way that you relate and think, relate to and think about things. So, maybe especially if you're more of a negative or pessimistic Libra rising, Sagittarius season in general, but definitely this new moon in your third house, by the way, which is the joy of the moon, it can be very good for you. You could just be getting a very big. Sagittarian optimistic boost in terms of how you are seeing something or thinking about something or maybe someone you meet in your local environment provides you with a very big positive boost and it's just what you need. Finally then Scorpio Risings. This is stuff like new purchases. <laughs> Also, maybe optimism concerning your diet or like what you put in your body. And also I have here zealous contribution for you. So that's all I'm going to say. My loves, have a beautiful rest of the week. And I'll see you in the next video very soon for, I don't know what it will be first, but it's going to be either Venus in Scorpio or the Mercury retrograde. I love you. Bye-bye.